Move on to the last panel discussion for the day, after which we're going to have a networking tea break and we'll move on to the award ceremony. And uh, the topic that we are discussing now is unleashing the potential of education 4.0 on innovative pedagogy and industry ready skills. And uh, please help me welcome on stage our session moderator, Professor Dr. Chathar Singh. Vice Chancellor, Rai Technology University. A huge round of applause to him. A very warm welcome, sir. And joining him on stage are other panel speakers. Professor R. Janardhan, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dayananda Sagar University. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Dr. Vinay S. Director, Sheshadri Puram Institute of Management Studies. A very warm welcome to you, Doctor. Last but definitely not the least, Dr. Mahesh KM, Principal, JGI, SBM Jain Evening College. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Can we have a huge round of applause for our panel speakers, please? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the last session of uh, Panel 5, and the title is Unleashing the Potential of Education 4.0 on Innovative Pedagogy and Industry Ready Skills. This NEP 2020 is focusing more on skill now. Education already it was there, hybrid sort of education, but now they are shifting to skills, making the students industry ready. So on this topic, I have eminent speakers and educationist with me, Professor R. Janardhan, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dhyanand Sagar University. Then we have Dr. K. M. Mahesh, Principal, Jain Evening College, and from the youngest group, we have Dr. Vinay S. He is director of Shishati Pram Institute of Management Studies. And I have been assigned this duty to moderate whatever they have in their mind and whatever they want to share with you. One request to all of you, we'll have our say whatever we have in our mind here during this panel discussion. But at the end of this panel, I mean the last panel, I think with the permission of uh, Dr. Janardhan and Mahesh and Vinay, we'd like to interact with those who are sitting before us on any of the issues. Because after that, the session will be over. So we request you all that if you interact with any of the panelists, you are most welcome. Now I request the panelists to introduce themselves. Dr. Janardhan, please. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Mahesh, a principal Jain Union College. Uh, I'm working from the past uh, 30 years as a principal of the Union College, uh, having the students of 800 students uh, from the different uh, background. Uh, they are all skill-based students. I can say our evening college has a skill-based students. Some of them, they are doing a CA, Chartered Accountant. Some of them, they are aerospace training. They are ticketing morning and evening coming back for the BCom course. We have only one BCom uh, course program, BCom. I'm heading that institution as not only as a administrator from past 30 years, as a visiting professor in the day college to get the first-hand experience of the teaching. I never ever leave the teaching that. I'll go morning our Jain group of institution, morning day college for the degree students, both BCom and BBM students. 
and I am the present uh, syndicate member, Bangalore City University. Uh, as a, a my uh, qualification is recently, because we are talking about the skills. Just I to explain about my skills. To enhance my skills, I recently completed postdoctoral research from the Srinivasa University to get the skill-based, skill-based. Otherwise, we 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 not called as a skill. We have a skill, but we don't have a skill. Means we have not upgrade. We do not have skills. So what my uh, skill for the skill seek? We have to upgrade, rescale, upscale, and we have to skill every day. We to face this present uh, generation students, uh, industry 4.4. From morning, I am attending the all the all th th talking about the digital things. To enhance the digital th skills, we should have a collaboration skills. And now I'll hand over to the sir. Oh. Yeah, the first round of uh, discussion is uh, to. Uh, permit ourselves to introduce who we are. Uh, my name is Arjun Ardhan. I have been founder, pro vice chancellor of Dhanan Sagar University and the senior executive vice president of Dhanan Sagar Institutions. Uh, yeah, I've got a few uh, things that I have done and uh, I thought that is something which is good for this forum uh, to know and I'll be very happy to share of the work that I have done in the last 8-10 years. This, I feel, would be very significant for academic heads who are here in good number. Thank you. Very good evening to one and all. Uh, thanks for giving the opportunity to share a few information about on Education 4.4. My name is Dr. Vinay. I am the Director of Sheshadripuram Institute of Management Studies. Born and brought up in Mysore. My area of specialization is banking and finance. And I also worked as a Massive Open Online Courses Course Coordinator for Goods and Services Tax, which is uh, offered by UGC Swayam Program. And uh, right now I am doing Financial Management Course for MOOCs courses from the Swayam platform. This is my introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my first question will be to Dr. Janardhan. What are the fundamental principles of education 4.0 and what new has been added and how Karnataka is embracing this paradigm shift. The overall theme of this discussion is on skills. Okay. Uh, why do you need skills or, or why do you emphasize on new skills uh, to be taught uh, to our uh, students? Uh, do we assume that the skills that is now being imparted <coughs> in our colleges is not adequate or industry is not accepting the products that are going out of our colleges? How many of you agree or disagree on this? We can go for a vote on that. Uh, I personally feel uh, as of today or, or at, for 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 5 years later also, the skills that are coming out uh, from a teacher to the student and the teaching learning is, uh, is really empowering this young boy, girl to mature and become a well-rounded personality ready to uh, get adjusted and respond to industry needs based upon the requirements of a particular firm and industry. If that was not so, and this I feel is, has been successfully going on, industry recruits uh, extremely large number of people. Now. Uh, Indian companies are catering not just to uh, uh, um, consumers within the country but across the world, especially in, in services like healthcare and in IT and in uh, several other services areas. Imagine if we were uh, supplying uh, inefficiently or we were delivering anything inefficient, uh, there would have been high rejection rates. Have you ever seen any anything like that happening across the world where an Indian engineer or a doctor is serving somebody and there has been failure, it doesn't happen. So, but if industry leaders somewhere do make a point that 80% of engineers are not employable, uh, that is a cartel and that's a message to depress, demotivate people so that I can hire you know, youngsters at a cheaper salary. That's not true. Now, but at the same time, uh, classroom teaching, syllabus uh, needs to be updated. 
skills that is being delivered in classrooms have to be updated. Technology is changing so fast, so one has to be relevant. And uh, even if somebody is going for an extra learning, uh, for a six month certificate program or whatever in addition to what is taught in the classroom and all that, by the time this young men, man and woman come out of the campus, they can become stale. So to stay relevant, to stay what, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to respond to industry needs, one has to really be updated. Now how can this happen? I, I see LinkedIn here. <coughs> And uh, they are one of the important presenters of this very program. LinkedIn presides over millions and millions of pages of knowledge, millions of people on LinkedIn. Now each one of them, at least one lakh people on LinkedIn are from Dhanan Saga. Now imagine the kind of knowledge, the diversity of experience, the volume, the breadth, of the collective wisdom that LinkedIn has got because of the contribution of each one of these people who have subscribed to LinkedIn. Now why should LinkedIn keep all that knowledge to itself? Why can't it come back to campuses and give, share through their own LinkedIn members, you know, share the knowledge that they have and the diversity is that knowledge, the, 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 late, the newness of the knowledge that LinkedIn profile members do have is something which is relevant for the students who are in our classrooms today. So uh, 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 this is the right forum for us to ensure to, you know, some, there should be some takeaway. Any event like this, there should be some takeaway. So I feel if LinkedIn leaders are here listening to me, uh, I would like LinkedIn to say yes, we are willing to work with academic campuses and Dhanan Sagar can be a starting point. Thank you. Hello. Dr. Mahesh. I have a question for you. Can you provide examples of innovative pedagogical approaches that have been made possible by technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and others in Karnataka? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my area is the research. Both research and teaching. Uh, we use Earlier, just a lighter side, I'll take a less time, lighter side. Earlier when I'm writing my article, I'll ask my wife, she's an English professor, grammarly check, do the grammarly check and pass it to me. She says, give me 500 rupees that time, 100 rupees, I'll purchase some articles. Today we are not dependent on my wife also, even my daughter also. Why? Because this technology is facilitating me that. The example, Grammarly. Grammarly, I'll use the software, I'll download the software in my research and when I'm teaching to the students, I ask them to first Grammarly software, please download the Grammarly software. And now I'll put it in the Grammarly software, it gives all the spelling check the sentence, paragraphing, everything it will give. This is one example. Another is, another software is QuickBoot, where I want to change the sentence, paraphrase. I'll go to the software, I have downloaded the software, I'm not depending upon my wife or my daughter for the uh, uh, program uh, grammarly check. Sir. I'll go to the QuickBoot, AI QuickBoot, and immediately I'll change it. Please, In please. Karnataka, that especially, these all softwares for the, all the researchers, for all the students, it is all free softwares. AI programmed, AI programmed free softwares, where we just, we had to download it, and we had to uh, inculcate in our uh, research and the skills to enhance the skills of the students. In Karnataka, that these softwares, we are not, need not to pay any amount. 
This is a way where example LinkedIn. The LinkedIn software, we, we tie up with the LinkedIn Jain University and Jain College as tie up. And we'll give to the student when assessing the 20 marks about the uh, accounting based things. Okay. Then we'll immediately will incorporate. Example for the rural area, we want to how incorporate in the rural area. We have a subject called uh, government accounts where there is a software called Priya software we had to teach to the students. We download it and we'll teach. And Panchatantra software is Jilla, thank you, Jilla thank Panchayat. You, Dr. Mahesh, I'll, I'll pass this uh, another question. Thank you. Uh, Vine, uh, do you think that uh, uh, new technology, just like AI and ML, that is doing some good to the educational institutions and the students, yes. are they enhancing the skills of students? Yes. Uh, one thing I will tell you is technology will not replace great teacher, but technology will be hands with the teacher, it will be a great transformational. That's more important. And everywhere we will use the technology. I will share the experience about on massive open online courses, especially for the instructor. See, nowadays we should go for the, that kind of platform also to attract our students. Especially, I will give my example, our Sheshadripur Institute of Management Studies which is located in Yalhanka. Most of the students, they are from the rural background. Uh, they are not able to understand very quickly, especially if we adopt the technology all of a sudden. They used to go with an formal based education system. If I am going to teach uh, accounting in Excel, they may be get confused. So we used to give some uh, technology how to use and how to adopt for the future also. In that case, we instructed to the students that every semester according to the subjects, whatever you studied in the classroom, study one MOOCs program. For example, a subject call it as business statistics, they used to calculate in the class everything. Advancement, how actually hypothesis testing is going to be adopted in the real case. So in that particular things, they'll go for the MOOCs programs like limited hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, they will enhance their knowledge. Definitely, education with respect to the technology is very much important nowadays. Time factor is very important for us because we have to leave this all yes. by 5.30. So I'll request Dr. Janardhan to share his experiences about the skill development that is taking place today in Karnataka and also the soft skills or the moral skills. We don't usually talk about that. So what have been your experiences in Karnataka as uh, ethics has now become part of the teaching learning process and uh, that is something which was uh, always given you know in school education it was always there and uh, teachers had a major role to play parents would spend a lot of time with their children and uh, as uh, as we grew at some point of time that practice was given up but now there has been a realization that uh, you got to uh, lay emphasis on ethics and uh, you know therefore uh, it has again started to regain importance and all campuses across the country and even in Karnataka and Bangalore have uh, devoted uh, classes for uh, ethics learning and it is it is received quite well uh, now on the skills itself, uh, skills is always related to employment, but we at Dhanan Sagar, we thought of a different program. Um, just to tell industry that uh, uh, you pick the best and go away, and uh, the rest can stay where they are. No, it, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, uh, there is a moral responsibility, again I'm talking of the moral responsibility of every campus is to see that uh, students, young people get education and education for employment and education for entrepreneurship. 
so that is something which we in the Anand Sagar thought of and we uh, majority of them are definitely prepared for employment and they have a written path and uh, quite a few go for higher studies some of them prepare for masters research things like that all that is good but uh, India had had, had uh, changed course in the last five six years and entrepreneurship innovation enterprise became the talking points and India has done exceedingly well and being in Bangalore then Sagar could not stay away from the experimentation in entrepreneurship uh, fortunately for us, the industry responded very well when we went and told we would like to have industry labs in our campus. It was a one of its kind and uh, yeah, initially it was not that easy. We had to tell a story. Uh, just today I spent, before coming here, I spent a, a lot of time with LinkedIn, uh, you know, decision makers here. So half the battle is won, I feel. So it was the same strategy I do. I talk to industry leaders, tell them why it is important for them to establish their labs in an education setup. So it, it is their, their presence uh, through good labs makes a lot of meaning because the people who go from our campuses ultimately end up working for these companies. And you know, if students are trained in those very labs, do innovation and things like that in these labs, uh, the outcome would be much better. That is one part. Second is using the technology of these labs, of these companies in an academic campus, we can see there is a lot of innovation. Now after innovation and good ideas come out, what? Again, should this young man, woman and his team become uh, employees to somebody or can they pursue their path of innovation, taking it to the next level of becoming the product being seen in a commercial you know, shelf, in a shop. It should be available for somebody to pay money and buy. Now that is the success that model we aimed at and fortunately we met with 12 companies, large companies establishing labs in our campus and we, you know, we did not write a check for that. The, the value of each lab could be 4 crores, 5 crores to 10 crores and the government of India was so impressed with what we did, they gave another che you know, check of 10 crores. So there is always, uh, you know, resources are available. Sorry for interruption. I want to ask one question. Whether this technology, this AI or ML, is also being implemented in the rural areas, the suburban areas, and to the downtrodden or, or to the poor people in villages? Yeah, I'll come to that point. I was talking about the because innovation. we are having a lesser of time. Yeah, I, I, we are, we are talking. We are now just. I'll, I'll wind up uh, on this part. We have been extremely successful. One uh, a lesson that we have learned is if we stretch our hand and talk to the community and in, you know industry leaders, uh, government, whether it is state government or central government or to any other gov you know agencies, give us resources, give us help, you know guide us. They are all willing if our story is, is good, it has got a you know, nice end to it. And we have been able to demonstrate that yes, all this works. On the AI, ML and all that, there is no escape. Uh, you would like to answer? There is no escape. It is something which is making life easy and it is the requirement. Whether you are in a city, urban city, metro or in a village, it, it works. It works wonders, as my colleagues here also were telling. What I can do in 10 minutes, I can do using AI ML in, in, in one minute. Even writing a mail, we all did it without knowing there was use of machine learning happening. If you start your sentences, the, the, you know, automatically the mail, uh, in, the, in the mail, a lot of words come, you know, uh, uh, telling what is the next word, next word, next word, and when you close. And if there is grammar mistakes, yes. Yes, sir. What sir said, it is right. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, it's a boon as well as a bane to the students, as well as the instructor. You're putting a rider. <laughs> Why? Because, especially if they are doing research, if students doing the research, they are not depending with the internet sources nowadays. You can check entire information they will carry from the chat GPT. You know that uh, 3.5 chat GPT, it's a free of uh, information you'll get it. The data which is up to 2021. If you require the latest information, you have to go for chat GPT 4, it's a paid version. What you can see is students will download the information from the chat GPT and even uh, your plagiarism software also will not detect anything. 
you can check your students all nowadays students are become so smart i have an experience uh, especially in the third semester projects this time students done very quickly their projects th with without any mistakes in the projects uh, we, so we are very surprised and i asked one student how this time you did very quick he said i used chat gpt sir i used chat gpt this time that is why we did very quickly you know without there is any mistake there is no mistakes uh, if um, that uh, what they did in the project normal similarity check software will never identify those information in our institution we have turnitin software that identified you know earlier similarity from the online resources was 80% 90% 70% especially the students this time what we check online resources similarity which is less than 2% and similarity from the ai or generative ai which is 99% this is the been for the students so we should not encourage those things somewhere students will lose their real intelligence we should take care of those things why because that is a challenging education 4.4 4.0 competencies learning methods information and communication technology and infrastructure we should focus on these things to enhance the knowledge to the students there is no replacement uh, just for the lighter side if you visit temple the god and the pujari will be there definitely like that teacher and the the mission learning or ai definitely will be there but we have to make the students to think creatively that is only with the with the way of 3 3h i think that we have to give health importance to the students and the teachers and we have to think happiness among the student and the teachers and we have to think about the high productivity only when the with the mingle of teachers skills and the ai we can enhance the three h three h is happiness health and the high productivity among the teachers and the students with the skills of the ai ml iot all these technologies i just want to ask one question to all of the panelists what innovative pedagogy or the new module or new courses can be introduced in the colleges and universities which have skill and employability janardhan sir i think uh, i may not be the appropriate person because i always feel that people if they are smart enough uh, if they can convert x to y uh, you know and make a profit out of it that should be encouraged so i'm i'm always looking at innovative solutions to anything entrepreneurship and uh, you know that is the way for uh, our people one man one woman giving jobs to four people five people and if 10000 people do it in bangalore you can see the opportunities that come up so let us all become you know employment givers so new skills for whatever reason if i want to become an employee i i work on my skills but otherwise i i work on ideas so my emphasis is on ideas anybody voting for skills uh present society we require two things one is we have to give more skills with the technology and at the same time empowerment of the all the rural area especially in rural area we can fulfill the sdg goals of sustainable goals only with the partnership with the collaborativeness when we develop the collaborativeness we can enhance the creativity of the students collaborative and creativity collaborative is through the exchange and skills and uh, i will suggest that experiential learnings matter sir whatever the students they studied experiential learning is about uh, uh, new courses new modules yes should we uh, continue with 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 or we should have new courses yes new skills for this i can give an example about if students who want to study at derivatives for example futures and options if the students is going to practice with the various modules and other things they should simultaneously go with an how reality it is 
how future will works in the market how options work in the market those things they should study with a continuity what they done in the regular classes uh, this yes. question came to my mind only because of this factor that one of my friends he asked me the question that is any university in india is ready to launch a course of uh, ev motors every motor company every car company is launching ev cars but there is no syllabus how to uh, how to repair the battery or how to uh, uh, repair the engine of uh, ev we have no course so far so he wanted to can know I, can i, can I uh, he wanted to, to know side? yeah please <coughs> Uh, any of you who would have uh, purchased Japanese uh, uh, goods, even in the kitchen, you know that a Jap when something like that goes wrong, it is just thrown. Any of the computers, you call the EDP guy, the computer maintenance guy, that something is wrong, he will never repair it. He will just remove the, the damaged part and he says it has to be replaced. So today it's a replacement market, it is not a repair market. So you, and especially in the domain that you are talking about, there is nothing like you repair, and computers do it. Computers warn the system and the software warns what is going wrong in the future, correction is done. So there is very less of, it's not the, the traditional engines, you know, they, they don't work in, the, in that system. So it's very different, but for a period of time, yes, uh, with the EV cars and EV automobiles coming on the road, uh, people will become acclimatized, and but then, there is no way an EV car or an EV motorcycle can be ever meddled with the owner. But sir, Something this is wrong. India. This is India. So today, we, uh, we have with the permission of the sir, 15 years. With the permission of the sir, that Bangalore is the first one 15 years back. We are the one who started the EV car that today is taken over by Mahindra company. That, that means we are thinking from the past 15, 20 years, Bangalore is a hub of electric vehicles where they today is taken over by Mahindra company. That means we have extruded skills from that time itself about the new skills, new set of skills. Uh, to further elaborate, without disagreeing with uh, the chair, <coughs> uh, how many of you are aware of contract farming? Uh, you may wonder, what is the similarity? Why am I bringing it in this discussion? Now, somebody, uh, a company uh, wants to purchase, say for instance, if you are doing ja uh, Kisan Jam, you talk to the farmers that 10 acre owner or 1 acre owner or 100 acre owner growing tomatoes, the, the Kisan Jam you know, the procurement guy goes and says, your farms, you are the owner, you are the farmer, you grow, but according to my requirements. So I give you the seed, I give you the inputs, and I will tell you the timelines, and I fix the price. The costing, we both agree. Now, that is contract farming, as I understand, and it is fairly doing well across India and, and no, sir. all over the no, world. No, sir. I, no, I disagree. Uh, no. Yeah, good. Uh, this is the, the reason why we have to discuss. Now, similarly, on similar lines, companies can come to colleges and campuses and tell, I want 100 people from X university or X college and Y college in these domains. And I will send 10 of my experts from my company who will spend time with your faculty and with your academic, uh, uh, academic council. They sit together, produce a curriculum which is required in a particular company. These 100 people are trained in that particular domain. And that company picks up these 100 people because, and then post the, these young people going into the company, there is no further training required. So those people are not on the bench. They are plug and play on the day they enter the workplace, they are ready to work. That is uh, my submission. Sir, time is up. Uh, I'd like to add uh, one thing. Recently, uh, with one of my friends, Vice Chancellor of, in Bangalore, he told me one thing. A former company came, uh, came to the university for campus placement. Out of 40 students, they selected. All right. But they wanted to see the students who have not succeeded, who are failure. They wanted to see 16 of the students were failure. So the company people met them and they selected four out of them. 
the thing is that what companies owners are thinking that is better for them the university may get 100% uh, or 90% students but they may not be fit for the industry now the universities and the teaching community shall have to particularly the placement officers shall have to rethink about the tenets of uh, placement of the students thank you very much sir i'm uh, grateful to professor janardhan then dr mahesh and dr vinay uh, we had very fruitful discussion agreement and disagreement agree or disagree but uh, particularly it was given when that whatever they thought whatever they have feeling about uh, whatever system is going on and whatever we want to create in the society uh, we are thankful to all of you thank you very much a big thank you going out to all our esteemed panelists and especially our session moderator professor dr chatter singh vice chancellor rai technology university thank you very much sir for very effectively conducting the session and to do the honors of presenting uh, him and our panelists a token of applause and let's keep that applause going for professor r janardhan pro vice chancellor dayanand sagar university thank you very much sir for your valuable insights and inputs let's keep the applause going for dr vinay s director sheshadri puram institute of management studies huge round of applause Dr uh, Mahesh Kem principal JGI SBM Jain Evening College huge round of applause for him ladies and gentlemen thank you sir thank you very much requesting for a group photo please